Spotting scopes are useful for many things, whether you shoot target, into hunting, or the simple joy of bird watching. Literally anything that requires you looking at something far away. Today, we'll be running through the basics of what makes up a spotting scope and looking at some options out there on the market. We'll also be looking at some accessories to help you get started with buying your spotting scope. On today's agenda, we'll be looking at types of spotting scopes, build quality, optical construction, magnification, focusing, field of view, minimum focus, eye relief, exit pupil, eyepiece, and what is digiscoping. At the end of the video, I'll be giving my opinion on which scope you should buy. Scopes are broadly classified into two categories, straight and angled. Now, a straight spotting scope, as you can see here and here, are called straight spotting scopes because they direct light from the objective lens, which is the large piece of glass out the front, to the eyepiece at the back in a straight line. As you can see, a straight spotting scope simply is straight. An angled spotting scope is called so because there's a 45 degree bend of the eyepiece at the back and without getting into the physics too much, it uses a poro prism to bend the light from here to here. For some, this is more comfortable because you can set your tripod lower and you can view your image at a much more comfortable angle. In the end, it's up to personal preference and what your use is, which scope you go to. Build quality is a major factor in optical quality. You wanna look for a scope with a strong magnesium alloy or polycarbonate composite body. Of course, these materials may add some weight to your scope, but that shouldn't be too much of a problem if you're using your scope on a tripod or not moving around that much. You also want to look for a weather sealed design. You want your scope to be water and fog resistant because you don't want water and fog fogging up your image. And most of these weather sealed scopes are nitrogen filled so they can prevent condensation and moisture building up in low or high temperatures. Without getting too complicated, I wanted to talk about optical construction of your lens. If you want more information, there's a great blog post linked in our description. Internal and external lens elements both matter in your spotting scope's optical construction. Similar to high-end sales lenses, your front element on a high-end spotting scope will have a special coating to prevent dust, moisture, and smudges from sticking to the lens. When buying your spotting scope, you also want to look for the amount of ED elements in your spotting scope to correct for chromatic aberration and unwanted flaring. Of course, the entire point of spotting scopes is to magnify an image. Spotting scopes are much different to telescopes in the way that the image isn't inverted. But you didn't know that. Telescopes invert their image. Now, having a non-inverted image is crucial if you do something like hunting or an outdoor sport such as shooting. You'll find that the typical magnification range of a spotting scope is between 15 to 60 times. Sometimes you'll get stuff even higher. You'll find these numbers inscribed on your spotting scope in this way, 20-60 times 80. Here's a simple way to read this. The first number, 20 in this case, tells us the minimum magnification of the spotting scope. The number right beside it, 60, indicates the maximum magnification. Finally, the last number, 80, indicates the diameter of the objective lens in millimeters. Now, the diameter of the objective lens plays a crucial role in magnification. The larger the objective lens, the larger the image projected is. So it's always best to combine a high magnification with a large objective lens for a clear image that you can view for long periods of time. Like photography lenses, spotting scopes require a focusing mechanism to ensure a sharp image and clear image quality. There's two types of focus that are available on spotting scopes, either helical or non-focus. Each of these have benefits. Helical has the benefit of being able to rapidly change focus and non-focus has the benefit of finer adjustments in your focus range. Many scopes also feature a coarse and fine adjustment on their focusing system, so you can choose between rapidly changing your focus or really nailing your focus for smaller details. To achieve optimal focus and magnification on a spotting scope, manufacturers will use an eyepiece. Some scopes will also come with coarse and fine focus adjustment, 
using course focus to rapidly change between focus zones and fine adjustment to really nail that focus in. Field of view is the maximum area that someone can observe via an optical device or their own eyes. In spotting scopes, many factors contribute to your field of view, including the magnification, the eyepiece, the size of your objective lens, and the construction of the elements within the lens. With spotting scopes, field of view is measured in degrees at 100 yards. The less your magnification, the wider your field of view, and the more you zoom in, the narrower your field of view. People typically use a magnification range of 20 to 40 times because it gives them the best field of view for activities such as birding or hunting. The minimum focus distance is the minimum distance that an optical device can observe an object. Similar to your stills and photography lenses, these spotting scopes have the same limitation. Of course, the shorter your minimum focus distance, the better, because it's better for observing subjects that are up close to your spotting scope. Such as if you're bird watching and you really want to see a bird close to your house with the maximum detail that your spotting scope can deliver. Of course, if your scope doesn't have a good minimum focus distance, objects close by will become blurry and hazy. Now, when you're shopping for your new spotting scope, you'll see the words eye relief being thrown around. Now, eye relief is simply the distance between the lens and the tip of your eye. At this distance, your eye will observe a bright, complete image of what your spotting scope is pointed at. Now, eye relief is measured in millimeters. You typically want to go for an eye relief between 12 to 15 millimeters to give you the brightest, most complete, and easiest to observe image. If you're someone who wears glasses or has longer eyelashes, many scopes eyepieces will extend or contract this back of the eyepiece so you can have the most comfortable viewing experience. With an inaccurate eye relief distance, your image will become distorted and hazy, so it's important that you get the correct eye relief distance so you can have a bright, clear, and complete image. The exit pupil is a small circle of light in the center of your eyepiece. The exit pupil is typically measured in millimeters and is calculated by dividing the diameter of the objective lens of your scope by its magnification power. Of course, the larger your exit pupil, the brighter your image will be, which is especially desirable in low light conditions. The eyepiece, also known as the ocular lens, is an integral part of every spawning scope. The eyepiece is typically located at the focal point of your objective lens. Fixed magnification eyepieces are a staple in the spawning scope's world because they offer a higher light transmission and therefore you can get brighter images which is great for things such as digiscoping. Many scopes also offer interchangeable eyepieces which have their own advantages. In the past, you did have to carry multiple eyepieces throughout your zoom range, but now you can just carry one high quality multi-magnification eyepiece to shave on space, weight, and it's much more convenient. Digiscoping is an innovative method used in photography in the absence of high-end telephoto lenses. Simply, digiscoping is a way that you can mount your smartphone or your DSLR or mirrorless camera to your spawning scope. Simply, the digiscope adapter sandwiches between your camera and the spawning scope body. So this is the Vanguard Universal Smartphone Adapter, which you can clamp onto most scope eyepieces using these three little prongs here. And this will fit most smartphones and smart devices as long as they're not ridiculously big. They also come with a Bluetooth remote trigger, so if your smartphone's compatible and you wanted to remotely trigger video or photo while you're looking through one of these spotting scopes or any spotting scope, you can do that too. We're gonna to be showing some image samples through each spotting scope that we're going through today using the smartphone adapter. I just wanted to quickly touch on that what we see through the smartphone adapter and the smartphone isn't the most true representation of the experience of using the scope. It will make the image looks a little bit different. There'll be some little artifacts such as when you zoom in on a scope, it'll make the image circle a little bit smaller for some reason when you're looking through the smartphone adapter. 
these are all things that you won't really experience when you're using this spawning scope in real life. So if you want a truer experience, it's best to use it for yourself, but this is a nice approximation. Now that we're well versed in spawning scope technology, let's get into the fun part and look at some scopes. First off, let's look at the Vanguard Vesta 460A 15 to 50 by 60 angled spotting scope. This is a really nice and compact angled spotting scope with an eye relief of 11 mils. What's nice about this scope is, of course, it's really small and lightweight size, while still giving you a decent focal range of 15 to 50. This lens has the advantage of being nitrogen filled, so it's fog and weatherproof. It also has an advanced multi-guard coating to prevent excessive chromatic aberrations. It's nice compact size, makes it awesome for travel, and it comes with a cute little tabletop tripod. It does have the cons of not having an interchangeable eyepiece, so if the 11mm eye relief wasn't enough for you, or you wanted a more comfortable eyepiece, you are stuck with this one, unfortunately. That all being said, this is a pretty good scope for its price. As for my opinions on using this scope, I think that for its size, it offers a really good zoom range and a nice bright image. In fairness, we are in broad daylight, but for such a basic little scope, I think that this is a great package deal. As for the drawbacks, there is a little bit of purple fringing when you get to more detailed areas shooting against the sun. But if you just need to look at something far away, this is a good option. Now we have the Cower TSN 502 20-40x50 spotting scope. This is a straight spotting scope like we talked about in the beginning, so there's no angle in the eyepiece. This is nice and compact and gives you a decent magnification range of 20 to 50. There's a front focus knob as opposed to the focusing on the eyepiece as we had in our previous scope and it's fog and waterproof. So it's nitrogen filled, your elements won't get all fogged up when you're shooting in foggy conditions. I said fog a lot, but that's all right. It's got a multi-coated lens element, so you don't get excessive aberrations, but its magnification range is a bit limited with 20 to 40, and this eyepiece is fixed. As for using the scope, I personally find that straight spotting scopes are a little bit uncomfortable. I can't just look down like this. I have to get eye level with the scope. And I found that some of the aberrations aren't that bad with this scope. I personally prefer a knob adjustment when I'm using a spotting scope because I find focusing with a knob here is a lot easier than focusing on the eyepiece, but I think that this is another solid and compact scope. You may notice that we've done the previous two on the same tripod, so this is the Manfrotto Compact Action Tripod. We recommend this to pair with the lighter scopes because this is a nice and small tripod, especially when it's all packed away, and it's rated for lighter payloads. Now let's move into our slightly bigger scopes. As you can see, we have a bigger scope, but that means that we need to put it on a sturdier tripod. So this doesn't really go into that super compact and small spotting scopes category. So we need to put it on something like the Manfrotto 290 Extra Kit, which we have here today. So this comes with these nice sturdy tripod legs and has a smooth pan tilt head. This is great for when you're trying to spot things and you don't want to have too much jitter in your image and you want smoother transitions between your shots. But as for the scope, we have the Endeavor XF60A 15 to 45 by 60 spotting scope. These names are really long. This gives you a much better eye relief of 20 mil, so you get a nice bright image and it's a lot easier to see, so you don't need to shift your eye around while you're looking for a clear image and has that front focusing knob that, you know, that I love so much. This has a rubber coated magnesium alloy body for a nice tough build and is 100% fog and waterproof thanks to the nitrogen filled tube. 
there is a little bit of a disadvantage of only having 45 times as your maximum magnification and you can't replace this eyepiece for better eye comfort or higher zoom. But to be honest, 45 times is probably a good amount of max for a lot of people. As for using this scope, it's an angled scope, so it's a lot easier, but it gives you a nice clear and sharp image. The focusing is very easy. Once again, there is a little bit of aberration, but that's natural, especially when you're shooting directly into brighter sunlight like we are. But the 60 mil front element gives you a big and beautiful bright image when you're using this scope. Now we have the Vanguard Endeavor XF60A's bigger brother, the XF80A 20 to 60 by 80 mil angled spotting scope. So as you can plainly see, big front element of 80 mils giving you a hugely bright image for when you're viewing through this scope. That front adjustment knob that we all know that I love and a pretty good zoom range of 20 to 60. So 60 times will be more than enough for a lot of people. I know I said that with 45 times, but 60 times we're going even further. This has a rubber coated magnesium alloy body, so it's nice and tough, but you do have the drawback of once again, not being able to replace this eyepiece for better eye comfort or higher zoom range. Something that I've neglected to mention with the Vanguard XF60A, that's the same here on the ADA, is you can rotate the entire spotting scope on the tripod collar. So if you need a better viewing angle or a more comfortable viewing angle in case you're somewhere awkward, you can always rotate the entire scope. As for using this scope, it's bigger. That's the trade-off of having a bigger and brighter scope. So it means that you might not be able to fit it into your bag or it'll take up a lot more room in your bag than the other scopes. But that's okay because when we look through the scope, this trade-off really pays off. I get a huge and bright image. The eye relief is really good. I'm not shifting my eyes around to look for a proper image circle and it has that 60 times max magnification, which is really, really nice. Now we have the Nikon ProStar 582A. You already know Nikon because they make good glass, they have fantastic optics for other things such as binoculars and of course their photo glass, but now they've got spotting scopes. They've had spotting scopes for a while, but you know. This is a slightly longer scope as you can plainly see, so you can't really fit this into any bag that you want, but that comes with a couple of benefits. One, you get this large objective lens of 82 mils, so you get a nice bright image. You've got multi-coated lenses throughout the scope and it's fully nitrogen filled, so it's 100% water and fog proof. This scope doesn't come with an eyepiece, so you do need to put in your own, but that gives you the flexibility to choose whatever zoom range you want, plus any eyepiece that fits your eye comfort the best. Here we have a 20 to 60 eyepiece on, so that gives us a good zoom range of 20 to 60 times, and paired with an 82 mil objective front lens, you get a really bright image. Once again, the only con of this scope is that it is a bit bigger and you need to get your own eyepiece. As for using the scope, I actually find this scope very, very comfortable to use. I don't mind the larger size because I use spotting scopes for target shooting, so I don't need to move a scope around that much. You do need to note that you need to get the scope size for your purpose, but when I look through, I get a nice clear and sharp image. It's really bright. The eye relief is good. I'm not shifting my eyes around to find a clear image. And the zoom range on this eyepiece of 20 to 60 gives me a nice solid zoom. Overall, I think that this is a really solid option for spotting scopes. Now we have the Vanguard Endeavor HD82A with a 20 to 60 eyepiece. 
This is a really nice scope with another huge objective lens of 82 mils. So you get a nice bright image when you're looking through the eyepiece. You get excellent eye relief with this eyepiece of around 20 mil. So it's not super hard to find a clear image. And you get coarse and fine focus adjustment knobs. So in case you wanna quickly adjust through focus zones, you can use the coarse knob. And then if you wanna finely nail your focus, you can use the fine knob. This is a really nice feature to have on a spotting scope, especially if you're shooting a variety of subjects. The 20 to 60 zoom range with this eyepiece is really, really nice because you can get super close with that 60 times magnification. And because it is interchangeable, you can swap out for different zoom eyepieces for better magnification or better eye comfort. This scope is weather sealed and has a nice tough body. So when you're outdoors, you don't need to worry about taking this out in rough conditions. And you can really knock this scope around a little to an extent and be confident that it won't break on you. Although it does come with the trade-off of being a slightly bigger scope. So you can't just throw this into any bag that you want, but that's all in the sacrifice for a brighter image. As for using this scope, this scope is really comfortable to use. I really like large objective lens scopes because you get a nice bright image. With this 20 to 60 eyepiece, I get a really good zoom range and the coarse and fine focus adjustment is really nice. The image quality is pretty good through the scope. Of course, there'll be footage of the image quality so you can see it for yourself. Now we have the Nikon Monarch Field Scope 82A with a 20 to 60 eyepiece. So this eyepiece is actually removable, but the Nikon Monarch Field Scope will come with this eyepiece. So you get a decent zoom range of 20 to 60 times. Once again, nice big 82 mil front element gives you a lot of light entering this scope. And it's very sturdy and well built giving you waterproof and fogproof protection. So, a couple drawbacks. There's not that little focusing knob, that's a personal preference. Not that little focusing knob to adjust focus, instead you get this ring. I'm not really gonna say that's a drawback too much, but this is a larger and heavier scope than our other scopes, so you will need a sturdier tripod. This scope and the next scope that we're looking at, we're putting on the Manfrotto 190X video kit. So it comes with this nice sturdy Manfrotto 190 legs and an MVH 500 head. So this is a fluid video head, so you get nice fluid adjustment in your pan and your tilt. So that's good for quickly spotting stuff and maintaining a smooth image. As for pros with this scope, you get a nice big objective lens, as I said before, so you get really bright images. Your 20 to 60 zoom range is really good. So 60 times magnification, that's a lot of magnification. That's more than enough for a lot of people. And you get that ED element, so your extra low dispersion element, as well as Nikon's field flattener technology, which gives you edge to edge sharpness. In terms of using the scope, you get a really beautiful and bright image. It's super duper sharp. I can't notice any aberration whatsoever. And you can focus quite close with this focus barrel. I think that this is an awesome and really sharp spotting scope for those of you who are looking for something of this caliber. But once again, note that it is a little bit larger and heavier, so you do need a sturdier tripod and you can't throw this into your backpack if you've got a lot of other stuff. Now we have the biggest, most expensive, and the best of all of the spotting scopes that we're looking at today. The Zeiss Victory Harpia 85. Couple of things to note, Zeiss, we already know that Zeiss glass is really, really good and this scope is no exception. This scope is amazingly bright with its huge 85 mil front element lens and it gives you awesomely sharp images when you're looking through the scope. You do need to note that it doesn't come with 
the eyepiece, so you will have to shell out a little bit more. But we've got the Victory Harpier eyepiece right here, which gives you a zoom range of 22 to 65. So that's a really good zoom range. 65 times max magnification is a lot. It's just a really good scope, man. The images that you get out of this are super duper sharp. There's no aberration whatsoever, even when you're shooting right into the brightest of lights. It's just a really, really solidly built scope. Fully fog proof and fully waterproof, super tough build. And you have the added benefit of being able to thread filters onto the front element of the lens to protect your glass from any scratches or dirt. In terms of using this lens, this is really, really bright and really, really just good all around. You have a barrel adjustment focus. So you focus by turning this barrel here and you have your zoom all on the lens. It is a little bit confusing in terms of comparing it to the other lenses with how it zooms because the numbers marked on the lens aren't the magnification times, instead they're numbered one to three. So that will correspond with the 20 to 65. It's just less zoom and more zoom really. But this is super duper solid. It's a larger scope so you can't really carry it around if you've got a backpack full of other stuff and you need to make sure that you've got a nice sturdy tripod to fit it on. Before we move on, I just want to talk about this week's giveaway. This week we're giving you the chance to win some sweet, sweet George's merch. We've got embroidered beanies, we've got printed hoodies, t-shirts and long sleeves for both kids and adults in various sizes and colours. To make sure that you're in the running to win some of this sweet George's merch, like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow us on Instagram, find the post that details this giveaway and I want you guys to comment down below, I want that sweet George's merch. The winner will be announced on our Instagram, so make sure you stay tuned. Now that we've talked you through some basics on what makes up the spawning scope, it's time for you to decide which one to get. The Vanguard gives you options at all price ranges, from their cheap little scopes all the way up to bigger, more competitive scopes, such as their Vanguard Endeavor 82A. The Nikon scopes give you amazing image quality and sharpness, especially for their price when compared to the Zeiss. But if you want the best of the best, if you want the sharpest image and you want the brightest image, you need to go for the Zeiss Victory Harpia. Made up of that Zeiss glass that we all know and love with an amazing build quality and a solid feel, this is definitely the best out there on the market. But when you buy your own scope, you need to ask yourself what you're using your scope for. You need to ask where you're using the scope, so that goes into the size and the weight. What kind of images you'll be viewing through the scope, so that kind of goes into whether you care, whether there's chromatic aberration or not, and a whole bunch of different factors. Now I want to know if you guys use spotting scopes, and if you do, which one do you think look the best out of the ones that we've looked at today? Comment that down below if you need any more information about the products mentioned in this video. They're all linked in the description. Follow us on Instagram for latest in tech updates, gear news and giveaways. If you like this video or found it informative, let us know by hitting that like and giving us a subscribe. Thanks heaps for watching and happy shooting.